Okay. Uh, before we move on into the technicalities of the session, uh, just a friendly reminder that again, uh, this these sessions would not be a monologue from my end. I would appreciate if uh, there's participation from your end as well. Okay. There would be discussions on live cases wherein uh, we would discuss what kind of inputs, what kind of recommendations, sources, etc. we could use to give a client ready output. Okay. So starting on that note, uh, before moving into the theoretical aspect, let's quickly discuss a small case, case study. So let's imagine there is a pharmaceutical company and uh, they have a strategy team. Okay. Uh, they are planning to launch a new product into the market and they want to understand what is the potential of the product in terms of the revenue. So the strategy team did a very linear progression uh, and they projected about $600 million by end of sixth year by, uh, of the product launch. Now, this was the forecasted sales by the in-house strategy team. Okay. When actual, in actual, when reality hit, the product, when it was launched into the market, by the sixth year, the product revenue was only $200 million versus what was projected as $600 million. Now, can you tell me some of the reasons why this happened? What could be the possible reason for this particular drop in actual versus forecasted? Sorry, excuse me. I didn't get the question. I don't know if you can be a little bit audible because can I didn't get the question, please. So the forecast done by the strategy team, OK? As per the forecast, they mentioned by the end of sixth year, the product would generate about $600 million. But in actual, when the product was launched into the market and by the time sixth year got over, the product only generated $200 million. So what could be the possible reasons for this decline from the forecasted value versus the actual revenues? Maybe due to the other competitors in the market. Um, I cannot hear you properly. Can you, if you're holding a mic, can you bring it closer to your mouth, probably? Yeah, maybe due to the other competitors in the market. Very good. Okay. So that means that the strategy team did not include the impact of the competitors. Could be a reason. Yeah, yeah that could reason? be a reason. It could be one yeah. of the reasons, and, and I'm also thinking probably they didn't put into consideration some other external factors, you know, like uh, some events were not um, put into consideration as well. In the, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, what kind of external factors are you thinking of? There, there could be um, events like uh, probably a climatic events, um, uh, environmental events, maybe war, or there might be changing policies in the country where the product was launched. Um, could be. There could be. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's so many. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There so there, be, there could is be a possibility event, of. Yeah. Change in the regulatory laws. Yes, good. Yes, um, exactly. Other external factors um, are rare. Somehow uh, in the last decade has happened a lot, but could be possible. Um, think in terms of marketing and promotional activities. Would it be possible that the competitive event has invested a lot in, promot uh, in promoting the product and in marketing the product compared to this particular company? That could also lead to decline in the revenue. Possible? Yeah. Right? 
okay so this is where basically ci team comes into picture so when they did this entire analysis they researched the entire uh, market they did a very detailed data collection they analyzed and the reasons came out to be two main reasons if you focus on this particular graph you see a decline in year two in the green line right so the product was doing as forecasted for the first year till the second year the reason for this decline was the competi one competitor entered into the market which basically impacted the projection of this product so there is a dip in year two again there was a slower growth because there was another player into the market that entered and around in year five there was another decline that happened again because of the competitor entry now apart from this the competition that entered into the market invested a lot into the promotional activities around the product so they had a bigger sales uh representative or uh, on ground medical representatives they were able to reach to higher number of physicians for their products uh, they had so the target pool uh, in terms of the prescribers was double to what this pharmaceutical company was actually targeting so reasons like this has a direct impact on the profitability of the product post launch okay that is why there is a very grave requirement of in depth analysis of the competition as of today versus what the competition would look like 5 years down the line or 10 years down the line um, becomes important okay anyone can do a linear forecast projection it's it's a simple straight line that you just draw on it's the impact of those events it's the identification of the event that's first second the impact of those events on to your client's product is where competitive intelligence as a vertical enters into the picture everybody with me till now any questions should i go ahead uh shruti uh sorry because i lately joined probably i might have missed out missed out the initial discussions i what's the point that we are discussing here today we are trying to understand competitive intelligence importance within the pharmaceutical industry okay okay so uh, so as i understand from the slide is i think there is there are forecasted sales but actually there is a difference in the forecasting because of the involvement of other competitors right correct yeah, yeah. okay okay Okay, right. so moving into the theory part. So, what basically is competitive intelligence? It is the action of defining, gathering, analyzing, and distributing intelligence. Now, you define the data, or you define the business question. You gather the data around it. You analyze the data, and you distribute a well-versed report, which is called intelligence. now what for which kind of assets can you do this activity it can be product oriented it can be customer oriented it can be competitor oriented okay if you do any of these activities for either of these assets which basically helps your executives and managers to make a strategic decision whenever we talk about the strategic decision it is basically a long term or a short term view around that particular asset when you do all of this activity for any of this asset which basically helps the management make a certain decision is called competitive intelligence now by the word competitive intelligence would make you think okay it's only in terms of competition but it's not like that okay regulatory aspect uh competitor aspect business aspect strategic aspect all of technical aspect all this gets consolidated within the ci activity so again competitive intelligence is not a globally accepted term there are other terms that comes into picture which can be corporate business strategic depending upon what kind of intelligence activity you are doing 
or around which kind of asset you are basically doing this activity would define the term. Okay. Now, coming on to the process of CI. When we talk about the process of CI, on a very broad level, I would define it in four terms. Now, these four activities would be, first of all, establishing the CI need. Why exactly do you need to do this analysis? And what, what output are you expecting to generate from this particular analysis? OK, so establishing the CI needs. Once that CI need is established, then you start collecting the raw data so that you can do the analysis and then create a intelligence around it. So let's take this with an example. Uh, everybody, everybody on this call has currently been recruited by a very well-known pharmaceutical company who wants to enter into pulmonary hypertension indication. Please remember this indication. We would be following the same example through all the classes. Okay. So our client wants to enter into pulmonary hypertension with a new product. Now the company does not have its in-house uh, product as is. So they are looking for a merger or not merger, basically they're looking for an acquisition or an in-licensing opportunity. Okay, they come to you and they want to understand currently what is the market trend around pulmonary hypertension and what are the opportunities in case uh, the client enters with a product into this particular space. So here, what kind of CI needs would you identify to satisfy his particular request? So his request basically is to understand the pulmonary market, pulmonary hypertension market. So what areas can you look into? How would you understand a particular therapy area? Or what kind of data do you need to understand a particular therapy area? Maybe the current products, what are the current products? And then what is the requirement? Like what is their sales? We can take their sales data. Okay. So in terms of product, you want to understand how um, cluttered or how scarce the market is right now. Okay. That would help you identify the unmet need. Good. Yes. What else? And then the patient data, like uh, what is the patient and then uh, yeah. price of the other competitors. And according to that, we can decide the product or the price of this product. Very good. So first, you need to understand how big the market is. OK, how many patients are suffering from pulmonary hypertension? How long do they live with this indication? Is it a chronic indication? Is it an acute indication? Uh, what are the symptoms? How do we diagnose pulmonary hypertension? Then what are the treatment modalities? What is the national, nationally accepted or uh, guidelines? What is the current standard of care uh, during pulmonary hypertension? Then you come into the epidemiology of the indication, wherein you understand currently how many people are suffering from this indication. What is the incidence? How many new cases are being diagnosed with this indication? How many people are dying with this indication? Okay. Then comes into the picture uh, about the product market. How many products are available in the market currently? Uh, how cluttered the market is? Are we seeing a lot of companies recently entering into the space or have been into the space since a very long time? Is it a, a new chemical uh, space where we are getting a lot of novel products approved? Or is it a generic product uh, market? 
where we are seeing a lot of generics entering into the market. So these kind of questions you need to break down. Client would always come to you with a very generic or a very subjective question. Okay, you need to break it down in a quantifiable manner where you have certain set of questions which you need to answer. So broadly, here if I try to establish my CI needs, 